This is an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and right next to these three camera sensors is a LiDAR sensor. The entire surveying community is talking about this LiDAR sensor and its capabilities that it can be used in surveying. Now you might be asking yourself, what is LiDAR? LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. By using infrared pulses of light, the sensor is able to shoot out this pulse and have it hit an object. The return pulse of this object allows us to calculate the distance between the sensor and the object. If you're not familiar with LiDAR, it's very comparable to a system known as radar. Radar sensors use radio waves to calculate the distances between the sensors and the object. Just as radar uses radio waves, LiDAR uses light waves. The biggest takeaway between these two systems are radar is not necessarily accurate. It doesn't give you precise distances from the sensor to the object. However, it does give a large range from your location. Radar is great for finding the relative distance between a sensor and where the object is. It's also good for locating, which is why radar is used for instance in the ocean to find where ships are located or in the air when we're managing airplanes. LiDAR on the other hand has a shorter ranged sensor, however it gives you much more accurate distances. LiDAR is much more useful in mapping and in modeling as we are able to recreate an object in a 3D world on our device. As surveyors, we've been using LiDAR for many years now. We use LiDAR in laser scanning when we set up our scanners outside of a building to scan the exterior of it. Uh, we could also scan on the inside of the building to see the different corridors and the rooms and the design of the building. LiDAR is also used in mobile mapping where we attach the sensors on the side of a vehicle and drive down a road in order to map out that road and all of the features around it. And we use airborne LiDAR, where we attach a LiDAR sensor on a drone or an aircraft, where we're able to then scan the bare earth and get the elevations of our terrain. Prior to having LiDAR on a cell phone, it was very expensive to have these sensors and to use them. We're talking approximately $180,000 for most sensors. Sure, there's cheaper options around $50,000, but you were still spending a fortune just to be able to scan. And now we have this, a $1,000 phone with a scanner on it. If you have the iPhone 12 Pro or the Pro Max, your iPhone comes with this scanner. And I'm going to show you how to use it. Now in the App Store, there are a lot of different apps for scanners. If we just type in 3D scanner, uh, you're gonna see you get a bunch of different apps that pop up some of them are free some of them cost money I'm just gonna show you the one that I've used which was absolutely free and that's this 3d scanner app I've already downloaded it But go ahead and download yours and when you do that you're able to then open up the app It's gonna start out by giving you the camera and what is in front of you now If you want just a quick scan you can keep the low resolution setting and simply tap the red button and uh your LiDAR scanner is gonna go ahead and start scanning your object. Now I'm scanning here just my desk, and I haven't done any settings. This is just scanning everything that's in front of it. All right, scanning the wall, come over here, we'll scan our books, plant our lamp up here, scan my award. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. Now it's gonna go ahead and generate the texture. This is our scan. Uh, now it's not very high detailed, but this is just a low resolution, quick and dirty scan, uh, and it actually did quite well. It was able to calculate the depths of my desk. It knows where the laptop is sitting. It knows where the, here we have my 3D printer. We figured where that one is at. Um, even the, the books here, the lamp came out pretty good. It knows where the desk starts and ends. Yeah, this is quite nice. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and go into the more advanced settings and get something a little more detailed. If I switch over to the high resolution setting, I get four options. The first one here talks about your confidence level. The lower your confidence level is, the more points it's going to collect. Now these points aren't necessarily going to be as accurate. However, you're gonna have more of them. The higher the confidence is, the fewer the points you're gonna have. However, these are going to be very accurate points 
based on the scans. So it's not going to register every point that it scans, it's only going to register the best points. So I like to keep it on high because it already scans thousands of points a second and uh, I can spare a couple of those points if they're not good. The next option is the range and this will dictate whether you want it to scan from far away or just up close. If you're scanning a small object in front of you, like let's say my keyboard right here, then I'm going to say close range. So if I move the dial here, uh, it shows what is considered close range. So at 0.3 meters, if I want further range, I can just go out and you can see how it captured the back of my room. So let's say I want to get just to the camera. So let's just say up to here. The next one is masking. And if you're going to be scanning an object or a person, this might be useful. So it will capture just that one item. For me, I'm going to keep it at none because I'm going to, again, scan my desk. And the last one is the resolution. How precise do you want the measurement to be? If you want it to be very precise and very detailed, then you're going to bring this down so that it's measuring every little part of your object. Uh, if you're not so concerned with the small details and you would rather just have an overall, then you can increase the resolution uh, so that it's much higher. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it right around here. Okay, let's rescan our desk. All right. And we're gonna capture this right here. Let's get the screen. Come over here. Capture our laptop. And you can see it, it's capturing the frames of my, my degrees over there. And I grabbed the 3D printer. Nice. And then here, let's get the lamp. We'll get this section as well. And when we're done, we're just going to tap. And look at that. We got a much higher resolution scan now. You can see my PlayStation right there. There's my monitor right here, the laptop. Now with a high resolution scan, you have a lot more options after you've done the scan. I wanna add in the colorization, so I'm just gonna tap on colorize. Uh, and it says that we can colorize it. It'll take about 22 seconds. So go ahead and allow it to do that. All right, now the colorization is complete and I can look at my scan in color and Man, this is great. Look at that. It got my keyboard. Of course, there's going to be some imperfections like right here, but that's okay. I mean, for, an, for a scanner on an iPhone, this has done pretty well. Come up here, you can take a look here. Yeah, I got the 3D printer pretty good right there. I got the lamp, very nice. And yeah, it was able to figure out where the depths are. And that's the thing that impresses me the most about this. It knew, and now I look at that, it knew exactly how far away the camera is from where I'm sitting uh, based on the LiDAR because it shot out pulses of light from here to the camera lens and bounced back and knew the distance between the sensor and the camera. And you can look at this in very different models. Uh, I've got contours right here. You can see the scan right now, uh, and it'll show you where the high points are, where the low points are. You can also take a look at the TIN, which is the triangular irregular network. And these are all the different vertices that connect uh, your object together. You can see where all the different connection points are happening from this scan. And you can play around with this and see what other displays you have. Once you're satisfied with your scan, let's say you want to export it and bring it to your computer. To do this, you're going to tap on share, and then you're going to be given a list of exports. Now, depending on whichever one you're using, let's say you want a point cloud, you can pick the point cloud. If you're looking to 3D print it, you can pick STL. I'm going to be viewing it in Mesh Mixer, which is a free software. So I'm going to select OBJ. And with that, I can just send it to myself via email. Now I'm using a free software called Autodesk Mesh Mixer. If you want to download the software, the link is in the description. Again, it's a free modeling software that you can use to look at your models. And now I emailed myself the model from the iPhone to my computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And there we go, now it's loaded up and we can look at this. Yup, just like before. Here is the computer. This is the screen. That's the camera over there. Uh, it's got the floor. It was able to capture the wall with my degrees, the 3D printer. It got the lamp up there. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, that's, that's awesome. And there you go. That is how you use the LiDAR sensor on the iPhone 12 Pro and the Pro Max. I'm fully aware that this isn't the most accurate. There's way better sensors out there. Most people are going to buy this phone and this is only $1,000 in comparison to $50,000 up to $180,000. This performs quite well. In a future video, I'll be scanning something with the iPhone and showing you the process of 3D printing that that object. If you found today's video to be informative, be sure to like it and share it with your friends. If you're looking for more surveying content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'm constantly putting out new content. And with that, I will see you guys next time.